Good morning, everyone. It is OTJ TV for uh, June, the first one in June. It's it's already June, and I think uh, probably a lot of teachers are kind of happy because we're halfway through the uh, the semester at this point. Uh, welcome to the episode with uh, Mary Nobuoka, uh, at least on my upper left, and uh, Chiuki Anase, uh, who is uh, down below us there. But actually, I'm gonna. I feel weird being the guy on on the top there. Just okay, put you guys up at the top and uh, above me. Um, and they're here to talk to us about teacher well-being and the science of happiness. Um, before we get into the show, though, I just want to uh, tell everyone who's in the Zoom room, thank you for joining us, as usual. Uh, we have um, everyone muted uh, until we can get to, uh, to, uh, to most of the questions that we wanted to ask the two ladies. And after that, we want people to actually come in and, and join us with their stories, their experiences, their comments, uh, their questions, of course, um, either here in Zoom or in the Facebook chat. Uh, the link to which I will now grab and uh, share with my friends here. Um, and um, there I will monitor the comments uh, so that then uh, people can see, or sorry, you guys can see what people are saying in Facebook. If you want to um, comment on anything else as part of the Zoom uh, audience, please feel to do so in chat. If you have a question you'd like to ask, uh, please ask us there, and um, and I'll send all of that information up to the ladies if they can't see that themselves. Um, otherwise, uh, I think this will be a, a really interesting episode. Mary, uh, Chiuki, thank you for coming to join us. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Uh, Mary, you have a, a quick little thing for us to do before we uh, get on to, uh, to the conversation. Yes, I would like to start us all off with a little breathing, a little meditation practice. And actually this breathing practice is excellent to use in the classroom with your students, particularly in presentation courses. I learned this through Matt Abrams from Stanford University Graduate School of Business. Um, and that is basically doing rhythmic breathing every day for two minutes to five minutes. Um, it helps you to calm down instantly and um, for students doing presentations, it's gonna help like lower their heart rate and their blood pressure slightly so they won't be as nervous. So I'd like first everyone take two deep breaths. Then follow this inhale and just now breathe naturally and focus on your breath or the counting is fine. Exhale, breathe in. Breathe out. If you want to close your eyes, you can just sit comfortably and try to focus on the breathing. Where do you feel the breath in your body? If you start thinking about lunch, just come back to the breathing. That's okay. Just acknowledge the thoughts. Oh, I'm thinking about lunch. And then come back to your breathing. That's okay. It's very normal to lose your focus in this type of exercise. Now, as you continue the breathing, I'd like to try another type of meditation with you and mindfulness. You close your eyes and imagine you're looking at yourself from above. You're on the ceiling, looking down at yourself. See the room that you're in from above. Okay, and now come on back. And I just wanna say a couple of things about this. Um, this is from YouTube, it's four by six breathing. And 
when you inhale less and exhale more, you're getting rid of carbon dioxide, which is what's helping to relax you. There are a zillion videos like this on YouTube that you can use. And if you feel you need the opposite, for example, uh, you, your students are kind of low energy or you have to do some work at ton at night and you don't want to drink any more coffee, you can actually do the opposite. Breathe in six, out four for two minutes. And that's going to bring more oxygen into your brain and make you more alert. So you, you do this in the classroom with your students if you feel that they need it. And one more thing too, that breathing together like this will actually help create a kind of synergy with your students in the class. There's, I don't, I can't cite who I learned this from, probably from Andrew Huberman. Um, but if you are breathing in the same rate, you kind of create a kind of great mood in the group. So try it out. And Chiyuki has another meditation to share. Well, kind of like breathing with the children. And we just do the children and sometimes like before they come to the class, they are reading everywhere. And I usually put them in a circle and they sit, sit in a circle and then do this one, like only one minute or so. And then I'm gonna count like four, then it, they, they have to inhale and then exhale, like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three. And then they can just uh, listen to my voice and then focus on that. So before I, I used to teach children and uh, before we do that storytelling session or some sometimes you want them to calm down, then I often do that. So sometimes I, I do that at the universities as well. So hopefully. Yeah, another reason to do these two in any classroom, either at the beginning or end of class, yeah. is, of course, to get the students calm. But at the end of the lesson, when students are doing nothing, just sitting there, they're not going on their phones or thinking about other things, their brains actually go through whatever repetitions you've done, whatever learning you've done at an accelerated rate. So it's actually like study time, even mm -hmm. though they don't know they're doing that. Sub subconsciously their brains are going through that. That's also Andrew Huberman, 2021. <laughs> I want to hear all about that stuff. You know what I want to talk about first though? Yeah. Is, uh, you guys um, came up with a, a bunch of questions that we're going to be talking about uh, and I put them on the PR card. And one of the things that kind of stuck out in my head was um, the question of why did you become a language teacher? I'm pretty sure you guys actually wanted to ask that of the people who were coming in to the room to talk to us. But I thought, you know what? I'm going to ask that of the both of you, why did you become a language teacher? Mary, did you want to do you want to start? Oh, sure. Well, mine was a bit of an adventure. I wanted to get into a new career and I had a cousin who had come to teach English in Japan. I was debating, you know, Europe, Eastern Europe was opening up at the time and or Japan. And I, a Japanese friend of mine was like, you have to go to Japan because they have great apples. And I'm like, okay. So anyway, I came to Japan for a career to teach. Uh, not necessarily to become a teacher. And I fell in love with it. Uh, absolutely loved teaching and built my career here and have really enjoyed the time, 28 years. She? Yeah, for me, it was, a, this is like a second career. I had a career change um, in my 20s. And my mom used to be an uh, English teacher. So I started studying English when I was much younger. Then in the school, I was good at English, but I wasn't really interested in any teaching. And uh, I was a little bit of a designer. I did the design um, job for a couple of years. And then after that, I started thinking like, what do I want to do for the rest of my life? And <laughs> it was actually, nothing I was good at except for the design so and then English was kind of like the alternative route then I started working at the uh, language school as a staff first and then eventually I thought well teaching looks kind of fun then I started joining some of the uh, you know ETJ the learning English how to teach English little by little and making lots of friends and I thought oh and the master's Maybe I should get a master's degree, like a little by little. Mm -hmm. Then I ended up in here teaching um, university level right now. 
at what point in that journey, and again, for both of you, and, and I, I don't want to keep saying, gee, Mary, gee, Mary, or anything like that, um, but whoever wants to talk first, at what point in this journey did you start focusing and picking up information that made you knowledgeable about things like positive psychology and teacher well-being and what makes people happy, what makes students happy, and the science of how that relates to um, language acquisition? Uh, how did you get into this track is basically what I'm asking. When I had the positive psychology at the beginning, uh, it was 10 years ago, Mary. I forgot mm. exactly what happened. And I heard that, well, I was really interested in psychology, but then I heard something like a positive psychology. And then it was the study about happy people, basically, how the um, very positive and happy people do. Then I was really interested in that. But then, Really, I started thinking about language teachers' well-being was two years ago when pandemic happened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For me, I was really fortunate to have taken a very special class in high school uh, where the vice principal taught us soft skills and leadership skills and uh, goal setting. And that kind of sent me on a trajectory to investigate more. And I recreated a course similar to that at the university level. And in that course, I'm always trying to polish it up and introduce new ideas. And I also came across the positive psychology and took a course through um, Martin Seligman's course online from University of Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She mentioned um, the pandemic for her, uh, Mary, how as especially, you know, it's kind of a, a weird sort of meta thing, probably, to look at the pandemic, your experience in the pandemic, and maybe using your own knowledge to soothe your own uh, stresses or your own worries in the pandemic. So how did you find that, that the whole situation where you know all of this stuff, did you actually found that it helped you and it helped others? Oh, definitely. In fact, I've written a chapter that's going to be coming out in a book that Chiyuki is working on. And I introduced the concepts of positive psychology in there. P part of it is building the resilience that yeah. people can have to deal with any kind of um, event that comes up in their lives and use it as a kind of to, um, step for growth. And you know, the way that you approach issues or problems in your life or challenges makes a huge difference in the outcomes too. Mm, that's so true. Mm -hmm. she um how was the pandemic for you otherwise uh, especially now as it seems to be kind of like it's not it's not visible the end of it isn't visible yet how are you finding yourself uh with uh, the knowledge that you have in terms of being able to cope with the pandemic ironically i studied the positive psychology like 10 years ago or something and then i've been interested in and also i've been a yoga practitioner and then i did did some meditation but ironically i completely forgot about it for about three months at the beginning of pandemic everybody remembers in april 2022 it was no no 2020 april <gasps> and it was crazy everybody got panicky and then I stopped doing all the you know yoga practice or meditation and I just didn't have time to do that mm. and at the end of the semester when I go whew that was really what a ride then suddenly I got the panic attack then for the first time I um I went to the hospital there's um, psychiatrist I, I really needed the professional help mm. but I think all those studies about the yoga and the positive psychology got me help that got me think that the, and I didn't really have any bias towards the um, mental health or mental issues and I read somewhere it's just a panic attack it's just a, a cold but it's not physical one but the mental one so it's mm -hmm. basically the same thing then um so i started talking about it even in public and uh, asked for help mm -hmm. and i got tons of help mary is one of them <laughs> she gave me some tips and uh, that really helps me to get back on 
um, the usual self. I'm I'm still a little bit strange. I think that from time to time I got real too panicky sometimes, but I could I'm aware of that. And yeah, I think the first few months were incredibly overwhelming for me too. And yes. I and I think you know each person, well, particularly introverts, extroverts, it really affected people differently. And Shiyuki is an extrovert. So to be isolated like that is really damaging to the human psyche. I'm more of an introvert. So I was just happy to be home. (laughs) Zoom was enough contact for me. Although now back in the classroom, I'm thrilled. It's like, how could I have ever done that for two years? It's so great to be back with the students. Yeah, me too. Same. The lack of time that uh, Chiyuki mentioned to actually implement the tools and the the, the ideas to actually keep your keel even uh, through this storm. Um, I, I, when I hear about people saying, oh, do yoga and, and do meditation and stuff like that, I've never thought about it. But as Chiyuki was mentioning that, like, I just didn't have any time. I, of course, experienced exactly the same thing that a uh, lot of you did, that um, I was wall to wall. I was, you know, from start of the day to the end of the day through most of my waking hours, I was catching up on learning Moodle, um, uh, keeping up with OTJ. And, and um, I just didn't have time to actually do that stuff. And is that now in your perspective, as you know, you've gone through this, basically a crisis. I mean, a lot of the stuff you guys probably studied was, was applicable to normal times, like what you do during normal times uh, to maintain your, your mental well balance. But in a crisis like that, um, I guess it is like the, the problem is the amount of time that you might be able to afford to give to practices in well-being. Well, you know, one one of the things I'd like to say, it doesn't actually take a lot of time. You can just take two minutes of that, like the breathing we did at the beginning of the session, two minutes. It's a more of a matter of getting into the habit. Mm -hmm. And one other thing I did, I'll share this with everybody because I love it so much. I have no connection with this, but I got somehow at the beginning of the pandemic, um, these CBT cards, cognitive behavior therapy, which Mm -hmm. is closely linked with positive psychology practices and of the humanist psychologists and it has these cool cards in it what think and you can get these on amazon everybody think act and be and so i'm here this is my little zoom office right and i'm on zoom with my students and maybe they went to the breakout room and i just take one and read it and it gives you a very simple thing that you can do in a few seconds sometimes or just to get your perspective right it's like um for, for example, the think one, if you will indulge me, it says sure. train, training your morning thoughts. Often our negative trains of thought are often waiting for us when we wake up in the morning. Write down three positive and accurate thoughts you can read and repeat to yourself before you get out of bed tomorrow morning, right? So the very simple thing you can do, or even just actually just thinking about those two helps. Um, act is take care of yourself. Um, what's one nice thing you can plan for yourself today and you look forward to enjoying or put something on your calendar like that and B, embrace uncertainty. It's uncomfortable to not know in advance how our lives will go. Will I stay healthy? Will I succeed? Will people love me? But this kind of thing can create anxiety. So treat today as an opportunity to be open to and even embrace the fundamental uncertainty woven into our lives. So, you know, these little cards took me not even 30 seconds to read and just get me refocused and work on, you know, just do one card a day and just work on that for that day. Mm, That's a really good idea. Just to do, instead of doing that, like a one hour yoga practice or something, I started doing only two minutes, five minutes, whatever I could do then it changes my mind. But when you are in total crisis like this, this is pandemic. We've never ever experienced that. Then you are just overwhelmed. Then you didn't really think about those kind of stuff. Then um, yeah, after the panic attack, I think in the summer, I really started reading again and studying, which was really good. And now, I know there are some of the students in the face-to-face classes, they've got, obviously, we could see that some issues they have. 
you know, um, facial expressions and the body languages. So I started doing that, you know, applying all the knowledge mm. and it makes so much differences. And I've been really enjoying the human connections and the human interactions. I was like, human. I want to talk about that a bit about like actual classroom practice. But before, uh, Mary, can you hold up that card deck sure one more thing. time, and I can find it? CBT, okay, CB. I I, yep. I looked for BCT, and it gave okay. me like, yeah, cognitive please. behavior therapy. Okay. And there are different ones. There's also ones for anxiety. They're different sets. Mm -hmm. I just love these, and you know, I want to I want to just follow up on what Chiyuki said too. A lot of people think that you just have to do yoga every day and then you're doing it and you, you miss a week and then you think, oh, I'm not doing yoga anymore or whatever practice it is. It's okay to kind of take a, a lapse and go, oh, oh yeah, I forgot. I got to do that again. Remind yourself. This is very normal for humans mm -hmm. to forget that they wanted to do something or a, a habit wasn't quite established, um, but then just go back to it again. That's, you know, don't feel bad if you you missed it for a while yeah that guilt is a little bit difficult to deal with we, mm. we have, especially for teachers we are really hard on ourselves mm. and we we often forget about you know self-care and seriously the at the beginning of the pandemic i was thinking about students student what am i going to do with the student you know my focus was totally the students and i completely forgot about you know how to look after myself and how important it is and now i'm realizing that i, I i've realized and then i look after myself first otherwise i can't really do anything i realized that was a really good realization i don't know mary you want to check that link that i just dropped into the zoom chat uh for an amazon link because that oh that's, no it's different but, but yeah I, I couldn't quite find the one that you were pointing to because I was I was trying to manage everything here. But okay. if um, if you can find the link, maybe that's something we could drop into Zoom if you can confirm it. And then I'll sure. bring that up into the Facebook chat as well, too. Also, um, if no one has noticed, I've turned on live transcript uh, for this um, event. And if you want to be able to see the actual transcription of what people are saying, just go to the live transcript button uh, to the right side of the share screen button, and you can see the transcript as we're going through. Um, my students too, I found, were really, really excited to see their friends again to the point where I had to like separate them. Like stop, stop holding hands. No, stop giving each other high fives. Um, to a small degree, but then after a while, I just realized there's there's just a, a flood of this um, uh, wish for human contact among these uh, 19 and 20 year old kids that you're not going to be able to stop it, even if you tried. So I just let it go with the flow and just made sure that they kept their masks on. Um, but do you find, uh, Mary or Chi, that um, the kids coming back into the classroom themselves have to um, sort of do their own sort of... Um, What's the word that I'm looking for? Their own recovery from what they experienced through the pandemic or typical of kids, they they bounce back really, really quickly. Yeah, it's like a two, uh, two years of no human contact sometimes, like especially the second years. And then I can see that excitement. Yet, like I said, the, some of them are not really excited. And then they are sitting on their corner of the classroom and... They don't really, you know, communicate with anybody. Those ones I'm kind of concerning. And right after the class, I usually have a little bit of a private talk and then just make sure that they are on the right track, you know. Mary, how about you? Um, I think they're just so happy to be back. I haven't noticed um, any issues. The attendance is still really great with my students. They're just that, you know, you, part of positive psychology is having um, relationships with people, you know, meaningful relationships. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just natural. We're back. Um, people are really excited. And the only absences I've had are kids who actually got COVID and they bring the paperwork that I had. It, I was positive or, or close contact. But I can't believe how great the attendance is because we all know during Zoom, mm -hmm. the attendance was actually fantastic. So um, same thing, I think we're just all, I, I didn't do anything special with the students except just come back together and they just seem really thrilled. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, quick comment from Melody. Uh, she says, yeah, her uni students are really, really happy, really jazzed to be back. Uh, Mary, is that uh, the link to I the actual I think so. Part? You want to test it? Yeah. It's uh, I'll take a quick look. It's the that one. looks like the deck that you were talking about. Okay, Great. so I'll send this up to um, the Facebook comments. And while I'm doing that, um, was there anything else that you wanted to uh, teach or teach to tell the, at least a few of us who are here or are going to be watching this um, uh, recording about building it into your career? About, you know, it, it, if it only takes two minutes a day, I think that actually surprises me that um, this should only take two minutes a day or a, a quick look at a card. Um, it doesn't take like, a, you know, a, a long amount of meditation per day to actually make a, an effect. Right. Um, well, you do this with your students too. I, I um, highly recommend doing some mindfulness training. Uh, one exercise you can do in a language classroom is for mindfulness is have the students sit comfortably upright, close their eyes and listen around to all the sounds mm -hmm. and then come back together in pairs and tell each other in English what they heard. Right. It helps open the windows too. Yeah. Um, well, all the windows are open now anyway. Um, but that's you know if you're you're doing um someone was uh shouting and the air conditioner was running or humming or uh, so, someone was coughing you got a, a language point there too of past past continuous and right. something like that so um yeah incorporate the small things that we learn into the classroom mm. Yeah, the, for the kids, I used to do that, you know, sensory activities such as that. But um, I stopped doing that with the university students. Then I started, restarted it because it needed like probably more than the kids. Kids are more sensory learners and then they do naturally. Like they listen, sit down or taste something or touch something they're curious about. But um as we grow up, I probably we stop doing that and we are not aware of our senses and it's getting dull. You know, you don't really listen. You are always looking at that, you know, on the train, I'm kind of surprising like nobody talks and then they're, they're looking at the smartphones. And even with the friends among high schoolers, they are looking at the screen of the smartphones and they're not talking. I was like, Wow, it's completely different from I was in a high school, you know. So and at like you do in the classrooms, I often do that kind of listen, just listen or feels, mm. which is really important. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, oh, Mark is back. I guess Mark kind of dropped off. Um, so both of you uh, speak about positive psychology quite a bit, um, and um, you have I I posted up the references I think that uh, uh, Chiyuki uh, provided us and I'll maybe I did maybe I didn't I, I posted a couple of things but I'll, I'll double check on that but tell us a little bit about that what what do you know of it or the people that you've read the references that you can um, bring up uh, today for other people to read yeah can I take over Chiyuki let me give a brief let me just give a brief uh, tutorial of Martin Seligman's work um, he uses the acronym PERMA so that we can remember the five elements that will help build well-being into our lives. And maybe you can think about your own life as I go through each one. So um, we'll go through slowly. So this is positive emotions. It's P. E is engagement. And R is relationships. M is meaning, meaningful life, purpose in life. And A is achievement or attaining goals. So the first one, positive emotions, this doesn't refer to positive thinking because sometimes that might lead us astray to lying to ourselves or whatnot, but, but actually seeking out activities that help us feel joy, awe, and happiness, these positive emotions. And, and actually, I want to say one thing too, positive emotions too is becoming outdated because then people associate the other emotions with negative emotions and negative, but um, anger and sadness and grief are just as important in human lives. They're part of being human and we should not ignore those emotions. We, we need to let those surface. They're telling us something about our environment or our own thinking. Um, if we are angry, it's usually showing some kind of injustice or unfairness that's happening. 
And we, but we need to look for evidence of that. Is that something that's really happening or is it my cognitive distortion that I'm feeling uh, um, grieved or you know someone's bothering me, but it's actually not them, it's me. So we need to kind of think about those emotions. So, but anyway, fo focus on activities too that help bring you the satisfaction in life. The other is engagement, also known as flow from Mahali Skitsim and Holly, who talked about doing activities that you get incredibly absorbed in. Often it's a hobby for people. For me, it's work, I'm very fortunate. Um, but to do things where you lose your sense of time, time often slows down or speeds up. Getting yourself into the state actually will help your health, your mental health. People who have done this more, um, Skitsman Holly says, actually live longer and healthier lives. So find the activities you love to do. It could be cooking, painting, reading. Um, but I have heard that Netflix doesn't do the same thing. So think of that, everybody. Next, we all know humans are social creatures and we need at least one meaningful relationship in our lives someone we trust that we can rely on and you don't need a huge network of friends it's more about having one or two or three close relationships really important so now you notice the first two are really about ourselves the relationships kind of relates to us and other people and the third one meaningful lives make having purpose is really about serving other people. People think you have to search for meaning, but actually it's here. And our brains are wired to have these dopamine and oxytocin hits when we help other people. Mm -hmm. So, you know, try to be of service to others, even in small ways. And achievement is about goal setting. It can be a small goal or a big goal but you should have goals in your life. And the science, the neuroscience is telling us now, it's not about the actual achievement, it's about the process mm -hmm. of reaching that goal. Because once we reach the goal, we might feel a momentary, yay, I did it. And then you're gonna have a letdown and that's okay. But the actual process of trying to achieve your goal is what is most important. That's, that is the, in a nutshell, PERMA model. The, yeah, the, go ahead, Shiki, you want to add anything? And well, that last one, the achievement. Well, just yesterday, my daughter was well, kind of like a story of my daughter. She went into uh, the uh, technical college to be a um, hairdresser. And um, she said, well, she was in the university and then more like focusing on the result, like you said. And when you got the great grade or something, okay, yay. But she actually started enjoying the process of learning something and then such a sense of achievement that she, she get. And then she was really excited about that. So um, having heard your story, it's like completely, you know. The yeah, and that's where mindfulness practice helps with that to be here in the moment now. The more you can do that, the healthier mentally you will be. Um, when we're thinking about the past all the time, it's often with, maybe with regret, sometimes happiness, but um, we're, we might be um, you know, ruminating unconsciously about the past. And when you think about the future, it doesn't exist, right? It's, you're anxious perhaps about what's gonna happen. Yeah. But actually the only moment that is real yeah. is right now, right now. Present. The present moment. Mm -hmm. and so, I'm sorry. Go, go, yeah. go. Yeah, the, so the point is to just practice mindfulness so that you can start to be in this moment more often. And you'll also see opportunities come your way because you're not distracted by all these things from the past or future. You're here now with, with people listening when you're with people. Oh, now you got me on my podium here but when you know i see people together on their phones they're oh. with their friends and mm -hmm. at dinner with the family it's like put the phones away let's be together here now and listen most of the relationship advice it's like listen listen first listen it's really more challenging than we think yeah mm. you listen to others you, do you really listen yeah actively 
Yeah. It is, it's incredibly difficult, but you got to yeah. practice it. You have yes. to practice. Yeah, mm. it, it, it is hard to do. Yeah. One yes. of the things I've noticed too is that one of the first steps to getting better at it is you start to become aware, like, oh, I'm not listening, right? You, yeah. Same with the meditation. One of the, it kind of freaked me out when I was first meditating that I started to really become aware of my thinking. But I realized, oh, no, that's a good thing. I, I'm becoming aware of it. Not, it's okay if I get distracted, but then right away I'm aware and bring myself back. Mm. Oh, by the way, talking about the meditation, there is such a thing like walking medita meditation or moving meditation. That's just, I'm a very active person. And sometimes it's very difficult to sit down and meditate. So I started taking that class, like walking meditation. While, while you're taking a walk or something, you just feel it, like how your feet touches the ground or what can you hear, really, instead of listening to a music with the iPhone or smartphone. Yeah. And you just listen to it and sometimes like amazing. And then you can see it, like little, little butterfly flying around yeah. you and it makes you so happy you know so touching all the nature as well nature is our really great teachers right just looking at that well we used to do that looking at the cherry trees sakura viewing you know hanami and just looking at the beautiful sakura just gives you kind of like tons of lessons yeah mm. that's actually the direction i wanted to go in the next part of the conversation um so it's more of those sort of personal stories, your personal observations, um, specifically as to that framework that you showed us, Mary, if, if you have anything more in terms of how to either alter or um, uh, improve that framework specifically for language educators, for the bunch of us that are here right now, um, was there anything specific that... Um, you know, do more of this uh, and do a little less of that as opposed to what the general framework said. And um, maybe move that towards doing what uh, Chi was doing just now, or maybe even more if she could, uh, to share your own personal observations about what you did uh, through either this pandemic or through your career, to actually take advantage of this knowledge to make yourself a little happier. Yeah, well, surely, you know, we're all language teachers and language is social. So creating and creating a very safe and happy, fun atmosphere is going to help our students learn more effectively. If they're in an oppressive, scary situation, they are going to be stressed out. They will not be learning as well as they could if we don't create this positive emotion type environment. That's one. And then, of course, teachers should be making goals. That, you know, making some even a small goal on how to improve your lesson or what you want to do next year, um, career path wise too. That is also a way teachers can utilize the permote model. Mm -hmm. um, building relationships, as um, Chiyuki mentioned, having her students talk. Maybe this is pre episode, but you know, the students are talking together. They're building their relationships and social connections, and. Um, yeah, and then we're serving our students, be there for them. Um, I, I try to accommodate my students if they need me, and I'm there to help them create and build the skills that they need in their lives. So I feel a strong sense of purpose in that way, and I hope other teachers can also feel that. May I add something to that? On um, the the one of the book I introduced on my um, uh, document, Martin Seligman's Flourish, there are many of the experiment which was done that using the positive psychology, the PARMA um, approach to the schools. So we can learn how to get a change, adapt those ideas at schools. So, mm. I, uh, I posted that not as a complete document. Gee, I'm sorry. I had to post it as text because oh. of the Facebook comments uh, wasn't yeah, accepting sorry. the PDF file. Uh, so uh, for other people, if you can just find that Seligman reference in there somewhere. I'm sorry, I, I didn't edit it uh, quite as cleanly as I should have. Um, one of the last things that we are going to talk about before we move on to hearing from others who might be wanting to uh, talk 
uh, on the same topic, uh, opening up their cameras and or joining us. First, they have to join us in the Zoom room if they're watching us on Facebook, join us in the Zoom. And I'll drop the link in in, in a moment. But for the people who are already here, we welcome you too as well to uh, open up your cameras. And um, I'll be opening up microphones too in just a second. But um, the theme that I think we wanted to talk about was um, the whole idea of finding more contentedness with both our careers and our lives. And uh, before we ask others to share uh, maybe their stories, I thought maybe we could ask even the three of us. Um, I was sitting here thinking about a story that I could tell about how I've improved my life um, by improving my own contentedness based on what you were talking about before with the PERMA model, Mary. But uh, based on what you were talking about in the PERMA model, in your own personal experiences, ladies, um, what can you sort of share as a story uh, that uh, we can take away as a going, wow, that was an interesting experience to, to relate to um, your own story, basically. Chief, I, you want to start? Go ahead. Yeah, I started writing the gratitude journal when I had a really bad, you know, the one of them. And I also started doing that morning walk and uh, kind of sensory practice as well. And how life could be beautiful, even under such a really extreme stress. So, um, yeah, those are the things that, and also, you know, Japan got tons of amazing onsens. And then nowadays, like a super centers and uh, you could just go and then relax. And th those are really uh, good tactics to cope with that stressful situations, I thought. Bath is a good place for meditation too. Mm -hmm. for, for me, uh, I kind of lucked out, I guess, or I don't know if you say lucked out, but when I, earlier in my career, when my son was very young, I went to get my master's degree and was working at university. And I worried my husband, we, we both decided my husband would stay home with my son. Mm -hmm. And I worried a little bit about his ego or, you know, would he be content with that? And I decided to, to use the Japanese strategy where, so I was the breadwinner and he managed the household finances. Mm. So I basically just, he had access to all of my income and gave me an allowance. And the unintended consequence of that, a very good consequence was that I decoupled work from money. Mm -hmm. And suddenly I was not working with for money anymore. And it was just my work. And that was a significant change mm -hmm. in my attitude toward work and in life in general. Mm -hmm. the, the purpose came up really strongly. Um, so I highly recommend if you could do that, decouple your work from money. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Warren Buffett says too, if you're going to choose a career based for money or because you love to do it, always choose the career that you love to do. Yeah. Something the, the money one and I have an experience where I took a job for money it lasted two years I was incredibly miserable even though it had a really great income mm. so. that kind of relates back to the story that I was going to tell because um when you were talking about um, the perma model and the idea of flow and engagement I was thinking to myself okay where have I found engagement lately and I remembered as I'm sitting here hosting this OTJ TV show is that um, I rediscovered my own flow and my own purpose and my own sense of engagement when I sort of found myself um, uh, for some reason at the peak of the crest of the um, the conversation that OTJ was having uh, to get people up to speed with what they needed to do for the pandemic. And as you were mentioning, uh, Mary, the idea that you know there there are certain things that will make you much happier if you don't do them for money. Um, the opportunity that OTJ gave me to actually help people for it wasn't I wasn't even considering the idea is this free am I going to be making any money from this or anything else but um, not only did it give me a sense of purpose uh, an invigorated sense of purpose but it actually gave me those um, those new opportunities to actually meet people and to do different things and to in a way make a little bit more money because I was doing what I really loved what I really wanted to do. Yeah, that often is the case when you approach it like that. That's a great story. Mm -hmm. And we all appreciate all the hard work that you have done, Jose. It's amazing. We, we all know who you are and we, you have benefited all of us. You're, 
your skills and talents have assisted so many people. Like, what, 2,000 people on the OTJ side? Is that right? 3,000. 3,000, right? Think of that. It's just amazing. Yeah. I, I didn't mean for that story to. to no, but well, hey, we do, stuff. though. I really I want to express my yeah, gratitude. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you all very much. And actually, expressing gratitude, as Chiyuki said, a gratitude journal. This is a great way to rewire your brain because actually we have these stories that we're telling ourselves, these narratives, which may or may not be true, by mm. the way, mm -mm. right? because we have these cognitive distortions that yeah. create, help us create these stories. It might not be reality, but anyway, when you can start to focus on things you're grateful for um, or things that made you happy that day, then you start to see more of that in your life. Yes. Uh, you're, you're totally changing the wiring. Instead of going through that loop of this sucks, this sucks, this sucks, or whatever it is that your story is, that you just start to focus, again, a very short exercise, just 15 seconds. What made me happy this morning or today? I actually have my students put it on their phone. It's the first day of class. I'm get out your phone, get open your calendar, put a reminder to yourself and just write three things and repeat it every day so mine comes up still years later um, at 12 15 right when i'm finishing my class, second period class and i just get the notification three things and i just stop for a moment and just think of three things i'm grateful for or that made me happy and or that made me happy and that's you know it's just getting you focused on that in your life yeah it's uh, yeah i completely agree and then you can find the more the positive things and then you you realize that oh i was when you're kind of down well sometimes you you feel down which is okay yeah. you don't yeah. really have to suppress your feelings like you said that too right. you don't really have to feel bad about it because it's really natural just accept what it is but when you're focusing on on the negative aspect then you are finding more negative aspects and then you get you know anxious all the time so then you're gonna stop that then you started yeah thinking about so the um journal gratitude journal really helped me to focusing and then it was getting like more and more and more something to be thankful you know just the tiny little things but mm -hmm. small happinesses um got my life really back i think yeah yeah, yeah. happiness yeah little things the, the journal too a journal can be used too to go ahead and write down those feelings you have that you're that aren't making you comfortable or the problems in your life and then you know look at that and take a proactive approach to make a goal mm -hmm. to somehow overcome that if you're having relationship issues then find a book that will help you with communication skills or to improve your own self too, right? Often what we do too is we, we focus on the other person. Oh, it's their fault. But what we really need to do is look at ourselves. And as Gandhi is attributed to saying, um, be the change, be the change you want to see, right? That's also, I think, really has helped me a lot in my relationships and teaching, right? Be the change I want to see. Yeah, in terms of writing, sometimes free writing really get me what is what is bothering me. Like when you started, uh, probably everybody knows that free writing, but the, it's just that come up or whatever come up to your mind. Don't worry about grammar or any organization. Just write yeah. without stopping for 10 minutes or so. Then the idea, like deep unconscious mind will come up and then go, oh, that was bothering me actually. Then you, yeah. that, then you can deal with it, right? Yes. Um, Scott Kaufman, who wrote the book Transcend or Transcendence, sorry, I don't remember exactly, but uh, he talks in his book about purposeful ruminating. So mm. when, we're, when we're ruminating and we're unconscious of it, that's not so healthy. We, we might suddenly be, oh, I'm thinking about him again or whatever. But when you actually have purposeful ruminating, like a meditation almost, mm -hmm. that can help you to overcome some negative experience or trauma. And I'll add on, I don't think you should do this alone and if it's a serious issue, but mm -hmm. what Chiyuki said about going in nature, yeah. um, there's a new, there's a lot of new science about your eye movement. And when you walk and you move your eye movement back and forth, and purposely ruminate about 
some negative experience or trauma, that is also supposed to help heal you. Mm. So I, I can get you more info. I, I, that's that would from, be good. Yeah, Huberman oh. talks about that in his podcast. I, had, I hope everyone here is familiar with Andrew Huberman's Huberman Lab. Make, make us familiar, Mary. Oh, it's amazing. It's, he's a neuroscientist and he's going into very free or low cost tools for based on science that we can use to be healthier, to be mentally healthier, to work on our memory, mm. uh, all kinds of things. More, he talked about gratitude also. Um, oh, exercise. Exercise is also mm. an important part of getting the, um, um, I, the woman I listened to, actually, what's her name? Uh, Suzuki from mm. California. Oh, um, uh, um, Mark likes to show. Yeah, Mark, Mark yeah. Suzuki. Yeah. Um, she, Mark's Mark's reference. Ms. Mark's Dr. reference Suzuki. to Dr. Dr. Suzuki. Suzuki. Yes, yeah. Dr. Suzuki. <laughs> she described movements, even right. not necessarily hardcore exercise, but even like walking as a bubble bath for our mind. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. I love that. Yeah. That was the latest. Yeah. I'll find the link to the Huberman and put it in the chat. That'd be good. While you're looking for that link, I would now like to tell everyone I have uh, given everyone the opportunity to unmute themselves. And I think it would be really good if people start turning on their cameras and, and maybe started sharing. Uh, I think we asked that people sort of come in here and start sharing their stories, just like uh, Mary and, and she did. Um, Melody, you unmuted yourself already. Would you Would you like to yeah, take Yeah, yeah. Um, when I first came back to Japan in 2000, I actually didn't want to come back. Mm. Um, Tatsuro didn't want to live in Canada. Mm. And, and I wanted to be with Tatsuro. So I thought, OK, I'll make the sacrifice and uh, and go back to Japan and and um, I found that you know there were so many opportunities for embarrassment <laughs> I'll call them opportunities um, so many times I found myself in situations that were you know I was just I didn't know what was going on um, there were cultural differences and when I was living in the small town my husband is from and and I was always uncomfortable. And then I started to write the experiences down and send emails to my friends about what was happening. And then I started turning them into stories and, and, and then they became funny. And then I found myself soon, I was going into these uncomfortable situations and I was thinking, bring it on yeah, because I'm gonna write about this and I'm gonna make a funny story out of it. And that completely changed my perception. I stopped going in anxious and nervous. And I, I was like awake and, and waiting for something um, unusual or weird or funny to happen so that I could write about it later. The light is mine, that's amazing. Yeah, but Melody, that is a really important point. And I have heard that when you, like if you had some kind of negative experience or trauma, like going to a psychologist, you're actually telling the story again. But when you do that purposefully like that, you are healing yourself. Yeah. So and then, you're telling a good friend or writing it down like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, writing is really healing as mm -hmm. well. When you can turn around like that. And, and also it was very uh, like therapeutic to just get it out of my head. Yeah. You know, where it was swirling mm -hmm. around with no form. You know, get it out, structure it, and make a funny story. Mm. Yeah, and then it became a you know a way to entertain myself and my friends. <laughs> mm. Mm. I love it. Uh, Ju <laughs> Julie Otsko, if you care to share, or anyone else, if you care to share, um, uh, if if there's a lot of people that start wanting to do so, I, I would I encourage you to raise your hand in the using the raise hand button so I know who goes in order. But um, uh, oh, and um. あの、ストレスとかあなんか感じた時は、あの、音楽を聞いてリラクゼーションしてます。It's the best one, ね。Nice. Do you dance too, Atsuko? Uh, that's what できないので、only 
dancing, moving your body, you're getting that bubble bath, you guys think mm -hmm. of it, bubble bath. Ah, uh, but also nice. with your relationships, I will mm -hmm. share this little secret. Um, if you mm -hmm. have a partner and you want to get in sync with them, mm -hmm. dance mm -hmm. together. When you get oh. that dance going together, <laughs> you're going to get in sync. Okay, uh, just speaking of dancing, <laughs> there's <laughs> she dancing. Uh, speaking of dancing, <laughs> Chiyuki, did you say that you, know, you were encouraging people to dance in the shower? Uh, yeah. Uh, no, okay, I'm sorry. Please don't dance in the shower. <laughs> there's, if there's, there's no soap. There's soap everywhere, <laughs> and, and if you, like, start dancing, you know, you're going you're gonna to maybe have an accident. Dance carefully Perhaps. in the shower. Ah, okay. Yeah, dance Mind carefully. <laughs> Maybe not in the shower. But... I, I have another way. Um, um, to, I to grow growing flowers makes me mm, ah, relax. Mm. So, mm, yeah, that's a good one. Close, close to nature. Yeah. Saki demo ne, ano, Nobuoka sensei no itta tori de, sono, shumi wo, yattari toka, ne, jibun no skina mono, ano, sono, ryori stari toka, yattari, jibun no skina koto yareba, so, sogokui desu ne. Yeah, lose yourself in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Long. Yeah. Julie, how about you? Did you want to chime in? Or anyone else? I encourage you all. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for doing this. It's um it's good timing. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I'm going to be these, eh? <laughs> I I don't know. Some of you know I'm going to be moving in September to Saitama because um my husband's parents, we asked them to, to start living with us because we're there in Kyushu now and there's nobody around to support them. If, you know, something happens, you know, like going through the pandemic, we haven't seen them in like two years. So anyway, so we're gonna move to Saitama and I'm a, I'm a little anxious because they're his parents and my Japanese is still not so great. And plus they always speak in like Kyushu Ben. So, <laughs> So, uh, but I guess I'm going to be like picking up a lot. Yeah. In, you in will. Really it's time. an opportunity for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, what, but, what part of Kyushu but, are they in, Julie? Sorry. What's that? What part of Kyushu are they in? They're in uh, Fukuoka, Kurume. Kurume? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, Kurume has its own. Uh, yeah. Name, actually. Yeah. yeah and yeah. Um, and I, I don't think I would understand it if I, if I tried to speak it, if it was spoken full on at me. So I, I feel your pain. Yeah, I don't even understand my neighbors from across the street. <laughs> percent of the time, they're speaking full on uh, Kitakushu Ben at me, and I'm going, uh huh, ah. right. Something about eggplant, yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah, I'm sorry I interrupted you. Go ahead. Oh, no, that's okay. Um, yeah, so I'm I'm starting. I mean, I'm excited. I'm I'm I love them, and they're incredibly, uh, I don't know uh sweet and supportive and um my my father-in-law is really funny and my mother-in-law is just so caring and um so we're really looking forward to living with them but you know also yeah there's all these big challenges and um as they get older i'm worried about you know elder care and um stuff like that and but yeah i'm, I'm trying to like so my struggle is to just not get so bogged down in my negativity like my fears um and yeah mary's been so helpful with me you know oh, thank uh, you. like as a, a you know reminding me about you know positive uh, bomb huh? what's that <laughs> Around her, it's like beaming positiveness right? yeah 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 <laughs> So I've learned a lot, you know, and recommendations like the Huberman uh, podcast I found is really helpful and um, little things like, um, uh, yeah, taking long walks and even in like the dead of winter, uh, taking long walks along the Arakawa, getting sun, morning sun um, has been so helpful for me. Um, so even like every day uh, before class, I sit outside uh, on campus, like in a green space where I know I could get, even if it's, even if it's a uh, overcast, I can get like the near infrared rays that are supposed to be really helpful for our immunity. So yeah, the whole time I've been pretty healthy, like the pandemic, haven't gotten sick at all. And um, the only problem is I'm just, yeah, I, I started to drink a little too much. <laughs> so I'm having to, 
got to be, be careful about that now. So, um, but well, yeah, what Julie, the, the, way, the, yeah, mm -hmm. the way that you framed this upcoming move, though, you mentioned you're excited about it. You, you mentioned a lot of the positive aspects of it. And I think it's normal to worry too, like, oh, is this going to be okay? And write down those fears. It, you should, you, you should yeah. not avoid your fears, but write them down. And the Stoics, I'm, I've been studying Stoic philosophy too, which is really compatible with positive psychology and cognitive behavior therapy. It's amazing. A lot of the cognitive behavior therapists were Stoics actually, or Stoic philosophy they studied. Um, anyway, but thinking about worst case scenarios is actually a great process mm. to realize, mm. oh, you know, that's probably not gonna happen, but do mm. like think of worst case scenarios and how can you deal with them? It's kind of like, um, plan for the worst and hope for the best kind of thing mm. but it, it's very normal to worry about that and what can you do to overcome any obstacles that arise I think um, on that note one thing that I wanted to mention and maybe this is a, a layman sort of in a way um, explaining things that experts already know but um, I think there is a really good need as you were mentioning that mary about um, don't worry about your worries uh, julie it's perfectly normal to worry uh, that the one issue in society is the um the the need to normalize mental health issues and to to get people to think about them as chiyuki was saying look if you can get a cold in your lungs you can get a cold in your head and um and it's a, a temporary sort of setback for you and it's not you know you're not crazy you're not you're not overboard. You're you're just um, having an issue that a lot of people will have, and and as we normalize it more. Um, and I was thinking about this because uh, a lot of people know I love hockey, and um, uh, the uh, NHL, the National Hockey League, is actually going uh, through um, a, a program where they're trying to normalize mental health issues. And as they discovered um, within the ranks of their players and coaches and the staff that there are an awful lot of mental health issues in a really high stress. Uh, setting like professional sport and they wanted to make that program I think it's um, incumbent on us to actually get that clear to our students and to each other too that normalizing mental health issues is, is something that we should pursue it's really ironic that the when we started thinking about like I shouldn't really start um, think about those negative thoughts and then as we do that we started thinking about more so mm. Yeah, letting into, yeah, like Mary says, maybe write it down and be aware of that concerns is really a good start. That first step to get maybe used to the uncertainty as well. Mm -hmm. And that is the, the yeah, um, I usually do. I got a really anxious mind as well ever since I got the panic attack. And then I started, you know, drill on that negative aspect nowadays then i started kind of writing down or um yeah being there first and then uh, start thinking about like okay uh, what am i gonna do yeah it is a kind of preparation i've had that i wrote down some of my fears and after i read a wonderful book i'll recommend called think like a monk um, mm. which i read right at the beginning of the pandemic so that totally helps me too. Mm. Uh, but that one of the exercises is to write down your fears. And actually, a lot of those fears came to fruition. Yeah. And I was able to deal with them more and realize, you know, I knew this was going to happen and, and was more much more prepared mentally for those things that did occur in more in my personal life. But it was helpful. John, John. How, you? how are you? You're muted, my friend. I'm actually muted. I'm muted there now. I'm, I'm, I'm on my phone. I'm I love saying that on TV. Go ahead. <laughs> hey, uh, thanks a lot. I, I really appreciate that. And yeah, I just wanted to say um, I'm fortunate enough to get to have lunch every Wednesday with uh, with Chiyuki Sensei. So this is a great talk here. Yeah. Uh, and, and I also wanted to share just one uh, one book that just on the topic of journaling that was really awesome that, that I'd say actually changed my life. Um, it's called uh, The um, Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod. It's something you can read in one day. You can just read it on a summer day. Um, and it's all about just setting down in the morning, turning off your phone or not turning on your phone rather. Uh, and not even meditating, but being silent for like 10 minutes, mm -hmm. going for a walk, journaling when you come home, read for 10 minutes, 
and then write down, like you said earlier about uh, uh, gratitude, like having like a gratitude journal. It's similar to that, but uh, it's a great book if anybody's interested. Uh, I highly recommend it. Hal Elrod, The Miracle Morning. Uh, I think you can find it on Amazon, I'm sure, in Japan. So, but, uh, I, um, I put them both up, uh, Think Like a Monk and The Miracle Morning are already in the Facebook comments. Thread. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, cool. As well I, as I came well. in a little bit late, so sorry about that. No, no, no. Oh, don't worry. Thank you. So oh, great to see you, John. <laughs> yeah, you know that, and John's comment reminds me because I subscribe to Hal's uh, e letter, e newsletter, and also Jay mm -hmm. Shetty's. Like you can, you, if you someone that you like, and go ahead and follow them and get their newsletter, even if you don't read it every day, mm -hmm. it'll pop up in your email that morning. You got an extra minute again. The minute is all it takes sometimes, and you read what they are writing for that day, and then take it you know, into your own life or incorporate that into your day. It's, a, it's actually, you know, Atomic, another book, Atomic Habits mm -hmm. uh, by James Clear. This is about creating these small changes in your life that make a huge difference over time. A lot of people are like, oh, I'm going to do this huge thing, boom. And, you know, three days later, they don't do it and they feel ah, like they failed. No, no, no. Like start working on the small things. Like Chiyuki mentioned, the little happinesses. Those yeah. are the things that really create well-being in our lives when they're actually these small things that we do. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, that's great. It, it can lead to bigger things. I mean, the Dalai Lama has said, if you don't have enough time to meditate for one hour a day, then you need to meditate for two. <laughs> right so i'm not i don't want to discourage people from trying to do longer meditations sure. um, and again go to youtube there are at least 500 billion meditate self or you know, guided <laughs> meditations for whatever time you do know, there's a five minute one 20 minute one 10 minutes whatever time you have in your schedule try one of those and maybe not every day maybe once a week it's okay 500 billion. I have a feeling that's an exaggeration, but it's okay. Um, I don't know. <laughs> well, that's true. YouTube has a lot of videos. I just wanted to mention, uh, because we were talking about um, meditation and uh, and uh, not worrying about worrying, uh, I, it's, I was reminded that as we were doing that meditation at the very start of the show, Mary, and I was really getting into the flow, you know, like four inhale, six exhale. I was, I was really focusing. And then I was like, hey, this is really great. I'm really focusing. And then you started talking about lunch. Sorry. <laughs> what do I immediately start thinking about? It's really to go, lunch. I got to stop thinking about lunch. Yeah, that's the danger. That's the danger of a guided meditation with someone else. <laughs> uh, I um, encourage the others. Mark, um, uh, if you're not barbecuing something, uh, or um, Mary, uh, if, you're, if you're not teaching kitties or whatever else, uh, anyone else, Yoko, uh, who would like to, uh, to come in with their stories uh, and tell us uh, what you did or how you coped or did not cope. It's okay to uh, talk about the ways that uh, you tried and you you couldn't do it. Uh, I think that would be great. Mark, good to see you, buddy. Hey, good to see you. I'm really enjoying this. So thank you, Mary. Thank you, Chiyuki. Um, nothing really to, um, I like, totally agree with everything you're, you're saying. Um, at Korea TESOL, was it last month? Um, last month. Hmm. Uh, Tammy Gregerson was there, and she mentioned that a lot of people are starting to add an H at the end of PERMA. Oh. H meaning health, because oh. that is such an important part. And yeah. uh, you guys mentioned like physical exercise, which is obviously part of it, but, but uh, realizing that the whole health aspect is really, really important and useful uh, as well, which... Mm. I don't know. Makes sense to me. Totally. I will say, like, I think, well, it's a combination of things, but I think part of the positive psychology studies and, and incorporating into my life that I've done that I kind of naturally started to flow to towards that more health oriented mm. aspect of my life more so. And, but it also is the Japanese healthcare system where they actually give you the blood test with a score on it, like a report card that has like, well, what you measure gets done, right? That has been so useful to me. Um, I have increased my scores on those blood tests in the last six years or seven years to have almost all A's so, um, from, you know, C's and B's wow. before, but definitely, um, you know, it's all in mind body connection together too. 
uh, really something to consider that now the sci neuroscientists and other, you know, in science, they're actually looking at this mind body connection mm -hmm. and how important it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, if I could co comment on that for a second, um, you know, um, my, I have some health issues and I remember the first time um, I had a heart trouble and I could, I could hardly walk. I was walking like I was 30 years older than I am and I couldn't breathe. And I was so angry that I was sick and I was depressed and I couldn't go on Facebook. I couldn't read about other people's good news. It was like, I just, it made me angry. <laughs> oh dear. So yeah, I think when, and, and, you know, I'm not usually like that. So it mm -hmm. really to be healthy is so important it is isn't it yeah. it affects every aspect of your life well, yeah. yeah just because of what you just said mel can i can i bring up depression mm -hmm. because i'm bringing it up because we don't bring it up mm -hmm. i mean it's basically not talked about mm -hmm. i find rainy season is a really great time to bring it up yeah. in class because it's it, it, rainy season is not clinical depression, but everybody feels down mm -hmm. from time to time. And so it's a great time to just bring it up and make it okay to talk about. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I find that really useful too, just to let students, number one, to bring it up as, hey, this is a topic that's okay, but also to let students know that, hey, maybe I need to talk to somebody that they can come and talk to me if they want, or they can come and I will take them to the to the counseling center. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But just Definitely. that this is something totally okay. Yeah. yeah. I'll like, give another example of that, Mark. When now when I do any kind of global warming or environmental type discussion, I let the students know if they feel any anxiety over this to mm. please talk to me and I will help direct them to where they can get help or help them you know, with some activities that they can understand that they can be an agent, they can have agency and do something to feel better about the whole situation. I think, especially with global warming, like some of the younger kids, they're, they have a lot of anxiety these days and we shouldn't just, you know, push it off as, oh, they're the millennials. No, they, they need some help. They need adults to help direct them and let them know exactly what you just said. If you're feeling depressed, if you're feeling anxious, talk to me, talk to the teacher, talk to an adult or someone older or wiser. And also it is really kind of helpful to tell them that seasonal depression is really part of our nature too. We all feel a little bit weird. I mean, the rainy seasons and stuff. So it's nothing wrong with that. Then to talk about it, it's like against the social stigma, which is really important. Yeah. yeah can't really say anything more than that it, it's so important thank you mark yeah. especially in japan i think eh? it is it yeah. is yeah. really important. Uh, while other people might be thinking about their last opportunity uh in the next 15 minutes or so to share their stories um you guys go ahead and think about that is there anything else you want to think about uh but i want to ask while uh, we give them that time <coughs> Pardon me, Mary Chiyuki, uh, where can we see you next? Are you presenting at PANSIG? You're presenting at, uh, at uh, the National Conference? I think you guys have a book coming out, right? Hmm. Uh, it's going to be summer, end of summer, or probably published in the, uh, this year's fall. What's it on? Probably, yeah. It's What's about it part teachers, uh, part-time teachers' well-beings and uh, how we cope with that. Yeah, or, during emergency remote teaching. Yeah, emergency remote teaching. And uh, my next presentation will be at the PANSIG, um, LLL, Lifelong Learning SIG, and then I'm going to be talk about that um, well-being as well, again. Great, great. More information. Mary, how about you? Where can we yeah, see you? Um, no presentations planned at the moment, but if anyone's interested in having me come to chat about positive psychology or goal setting or soft skills, very happy to do that uh, at any JALTS chapter. Um, I'm Light now up. the Yokohama JALT president, so we're, I'm busy with that too, organizing, helping to organize and facilitate things happening there. So please visit Yokohama JALT sometime. We'll Yay. see you at the ABM. Yeah, actually, my representative is going. I'm giving, oh, I'm trying to give other officers opportunities to see the, how the leadership works. So 
I have a day off. Actually, I'm at, I'm going to be at a Yokohama Jolt event that day on Sunday, but my, uh, one of my program chairs will be there. Oh, good. Yeah. And you have a chapter in Chiyuki's team's book, I think, Mary? Yes, yes. Yeah. My chapter will be in there too. And I address uh, positive psychology and I show, actually, as Chiyuki mentioned, my my chapter starts at the first three months were really overwhelming. And mm -hmm. it, it is like keeping your head above water. It was hard. So I don't want to say that, you know, oh, I had positive psychology. So everything was great. That was not the case. But um, we kept um, notes on their survey each week. Yeah. And then when I, yeah, when, when I went back to look through those and I could see, oh, look at these things that I was doing and the the, I could see the actions I was taking that were related and, you know, talked about that in the chapter related to positive psychology. Great. Um, good to know that uh, this uh, topic is being um, talked about more and more uh, in a more open sort of way. I would also encourage anyone who sees this or anyone, certainly anyone who's here um, to um, at least I welcome uh, topics and, and comments and threads of this nature more on OTJ. And, uh, and I know that um, people might be thinking, well, yeah, but that's all about online teaching. That's about technology, right? Well, <laughs> um, a, a great part of what goes into online teaching is ourselves and our, our health and our ability to take care of ourselves and to take care of each other uh, is one of the great things that um, OTJ did in terms of our pedagogy, our, our tech technical approach to our pedagogy. But I think, um, certainly, I believe that this is something that... Um, we should talk about more in as many venues as we can. So please, everyone, at least I encourage it. Um, last chance for anyone who wants to talk a little bit of, or ask a question, if there's anything that you want to ask uh, 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 Mary or Chi or, or anyone else that's actually here present. We're good. Um, I wanted to talk about this too, because I, I didn't do this last time and I felt like a fool. I, I, I should have talked about how uh, Mary and Chi were going to be coming up um, at the, the end of Anne Maeda's uh, presentation. And I apologize to the two ladies for not having done that. And I will not do that again. And instead, I will talk about how uh, Dr. Jerry Yokoda uh, will be coming uh, next week. And, uh, and I'm really looking forward to this one because as she and I were talking about, oh, what do you want to talk about, Jerry? I thought uh, I would ask you to come and talk about SDGs. And she goes, nah, nah, I talk about SDGs all the time. And I go, oh, okay, so what do you want to talk about? And she took like a few seconds, said, you know what I want to talk about? I want to talk about parsnips. And I thought, okay, this will be fun. Uh, because for those of you who don't know, there's an entire acronym there that goes, what is it, politics, alcohol, What's R? Religion, uh, S, sex. Uh, what's N? Nudity. Thank you. Uh, I and P, Mark? It depends on which list. Oh. Isms is the most common one. And then pork. I Israel, if you want to get yourself in a lot of trouble. <laughs> All right. Isms and, and pork. pork. And the last S is smoking. There you go. Okay. Oh, I, I talk about smoking all the time. Well, yeah, but the publishers don't let you. To the point really? that- Really? One of the university presses, I won't mention which one, but the one that Mike McCarthy publishes with, <laughs> would not, and he, he was doing a vocab-based book, right? They would not allow the term no smoking because it implies that smoking is okay in some places. What? It's, it's insane. Oh, see, see, like, don't you just love sort of like addressing double think and making your brain do backflips to it's try to accommodate. Avoid reality. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, it, uh, is this a Japanese thing or is this a? Um, no, other... this is a publisher's thing. Publishers is... globally. Uh, globally. Yeah. Wow. San they like to sanitize the material. Mm. And this yeah. is why I like working with Dorothy because she just loves like taking stuff like this by the throat, strangling it, and then holding it up uh, uh, in, in, uh, for all to see. But what uh, Dr. Uh, Yokoda and I will be talking about is how this is um, just something that's uh, kind of in the way, uh, to, to put it mildly. So uh, I would encourage everyone to join us. I think that'll be a fascinating conversation. I, 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 uh, I don't get to talk to Dr. Jerry Yokoda that much because she's so busy uh, doing uh, lots of presentations on, on things like SDGs and, uh, and a very uh, big figure in JALT. So it'd be fun to actually get her into a conversation. 
Mary uh, Chiyuki, uh, thank you very much for coming around today. Um, thank you for having us. Any last words? No, not that we're going to send you to an executioner's chair. Any <laughs> thank you so much. Um, enjoy your life. Yeah. Wholeheartedly. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, reach out if you're really struggling. Yeah. Don't keep it to yourself. You know, talk, find someone, email me, uh, you know, don't, don't keep it to yourself. You need to start on that journey of self-healing and, you know, it just starts with small steps. So yeah. re reach out. Mm -hmm. uh, thank everyone who came. Oh, um, oh, Mark, oh, I thought you were raising your hand. You were getting ready to clap. Okay, yeah. uh, I thank everyone who came and a round of applause for the ladies, everybody. Thank you, thank you. And a round of applause for Jose, that's being a great host. Thank you. Thanks for putting us together, Jose. I, I wanted to show everybody this. This is so cool. This is a new feature in Zoom, but watch me, okay? Here's my here's my left hand. Okay, now watch. I'm gonna just put just gonna just gonna put it here so you so it's you can see that's doing nothing. Okay, now watch this. Three, two, one. Not cool. <laughs> it gave me a thumbs up. Now if I if I do this, four, three, two, one. There. It raises pretty my cool. hand. That's pretty cool. Right? Only it actually, the you have to set it. It's in, um, <laughs> in your Zoom settings, uh, in the general settings at the very bottom. And it okay. says, um, recognize my hand gestures for the emoticons for thumbs up and raise hand. I do oh, remember okay. that, that uh, you so have So it doesn't board. have any other like uh, off color gestures or? No, I, for a second there this morning, <laughs> I thought when um, Mary inadvertently hit the frown emoji, I thought, Holy cow, did that thing just see your frown and just like uh, <laughs> recognize it? No, it does. It only does thumbs up and raise hands, which okay. is good because could you imagine if you set that off and then, you know, you kind of inadvertently frown for a second and it puts up a, a frown emoji in your top right corner. Uh, so yeah, no, it's, it's only for those two things. In okay. any case, I will now be um, turning off the recording. So uh, everybody, um, just a uh, big wave. Thanks for coming. Bye everybody.